someone actively chooses to harm their own well-being, when they put their lives at risk and harm others while doing so, we don't think that action is justified. We don't think that those actions should go unpunished. We stand for a world inside proposition where we increase the healthcare to the best. We're increasing the healthcare is the best way to do so. We are very, very proud to propose on that basis. Okay. First, let's go into our model. We think that a dangerous lifestyle means any habits or activities that one chooses to do that actively hurts their physical or mental health on a repeated basis. This means that doing drugs, um, drinking a lot of alcohol, excess amount of alcohol that actually harms your body. Secondly, we're going to talk up. Uh, track this down using hospital records, uh, which include things like how often you go to the hospital, what type of injury you face, and the reason for these injuries. And thirdly, we tell you that we start making them pay more if they abuse the system because of these dangerous lifestyles that they're living. If a person is admitted to the hospital, let's say, for drug overdose four times like a month, they will pay the extra cost proportional to their abuse of their health. No, thank you. This means a person who is admitted to the hospital for, uh, for drug abuse four times a month will pay more than a person who is admitted to the hospital two times a month. That's what we support on our side of the house. But finally, what we tell you that the money we, we receive from the extra pay that these people, or from the extra money we, will, we receive, will be invested into re rehabilitation programs and back into the healthcare system. I think that's better. Our stance is simple. First, we believe that someone who actively chooses to harm their health deserves to pay more. Um, healthcare, and this will create overall benefit to society, but secondly, we believe that this is the only option, the best option, to help their case. No, thank you. Let's go on to my first point about justification. Okay. We tell you that people who actively choose to live dangerous lifestyles and hurt themselves deserve to be punished more. We tell you that all actions have their own consequences. In the status quo, you give people medicine and care, and we have them back to society as a hospital, right? So if someone breaks their leg, we give them care, the necessities they need, so they can recontribute and go back to society. However, when, that when an individual goes back into society with the same mindset that got them inside, which was from a dangerous lifestyle, then they will go back and choose to go back to society and risk and hurt themselves even further. No, thank you. We are justified in passing this resolution. Because now these people are actively choosing to exploit the system. They're not using the resources that they are provided effectively. Because what they're doing is they're going back to society and hurting themselves again. We think they're principally justified to do this. Therefore, well, thank you. Because they're taking advantage of the system, in this case, which is the healthcare system, we punish them through the system as a better compensation for the damage that they have committed towards the healthcare system and the damage that they've committed <coughs> to other individuals, which I'll, also be, which I'll also be talking about later. Okay. But even if we aren't justified to do this, do this. even if you buy the like opposition's case, we tell you that because they use the system more, they use more services, we again justify doing this because they use more services. When a person lives a dangerous lifestyle and puts their life on edge on a daily and consistent basis, we tell you it's a preconceived notion that they get injured more. No, thank you, that they need more health care, uh, they need more care from the hospitals than an average person does. So we tell you that ultimately, when a person uses a service more, they deserve to be charged more, they deserve to be paid more. No, thank you. Think that's how the principle, no, thank you, of business works in society, right? If you need more massages than another person, you pay more money, right? I think that's how uh, this thing works. I think it's the same situation. I think it's principally justified because now we're charging them by proportion. No, thank you. We bring the example of drugs and alcohol. We think that when you take a lot of these uh, dangerous stuff, there's a lot of toxins, a lot of dangerous chemicals, so we think this physically hurts uh, the body, like, uh, physically hurts the body, no thank you. But for the moral we tell you, so we intake a lot of these like, dangerous stuff, it makes a person think irrationally. When you're drunk, when you're high, you think you have less control over your conscience, and that the, the, the direct result of having less control of your mind is having less control of your body, which ultimately means they can even get injured, they can even get injured even more badly, so that's the harm that's on their side of the house. No, thank you. We think the comparative is on their side of the house. People can get away with abusing the system. They have nothing actually happens. People are allowed to, after they are healed the first time, go back to society and hurt themselves again, and go back to society and continue to exploit the system. We think this principle is unhinged to the practical outcome just on the basis that they use the system more. We think we are justified in doing that. Shh, I'll take one of you. Maggie. If I have heredity, a heredity, a hereditary lung disease, and I also smoke, I require the same amount of treatment, why do I pay more? We think if you have heredity disease, do we think that you won't be, um, like, 
actually punish like equally on the status quo. We tell you that we give you gifts like your special treatment because you were born with it. We're saying for the individuals that choose to smoke on a very excessive basis, they harm the body so much on the basis that like they have to go like every time they go back, they abuse it and they go back to society again. We think we charge them on that basis. But furthermore, if you do have a hereditary disease like that, we don't think you will smoke as much just because you know will harm you even more. We think that's a POI does not stand. Okay, let's go into the practical here about deterrence. First First, we tell you that on our side of the house, on their side of the house, excuse me, in the status quo, people are, uh, people are allowed to get away with living dangerous lifestyles. I think there's no extra punishments involved for them. They'll be able to be patched up and fixed for the same price as everyone else, even if they use the system more, even if they go to the hospital more on a more consistent basis. Okay, we tell you that this allows them to live a more dangerous lifestyle. So as a result, we think they're allowed to spend more money on drugs, more alcohol, spend more money on things that actively harm them in the status quo. We tell you this is very, very bad. Okay, we tell you as a result of this, they can go broke and essentially ruin their life by doing this. But secondly, I think they're more isolated, isolated from the family once they engage in things like drugs and alcohol. I think this is also intrinsically harmful for them. But thirdly, there are mental and physical damage to them. Like they can damage their organs and they can damage their mental capacity in diseases when you do spell certain drugs. We want to help them the status quo. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that these people that we're talking about here who live on a dangerous lifestyle aren't too late to come back. We want to give them another chance. We want to help them. How do we do that? No, thank you. First of all, we tell you that they'll be deterred from living a dangerous lifestyle that we talked about in the first place with our resolution. We think this is mutually exclusive to our side of the house, no thank you, because this is better for us, uh, because we think they are more control at the beginning. When they first choose to engage in the dangerous and physical lifestyle, they are fully conscious. However, when someone's in the middle, let's say, in the middle of like, already living a dangerous lifestyle, like taking drugs, taking alcohol, right? We don't think they're, we think they're already addicted, but it's hard for them to suddenly just change their life around. If we prevent them from doing these things in the first place, we think that's very beneficial. We are able to do that. A couple reasons how we benefit them. First, or why they change. We think they need money, no thank you, to buy things, right? We think they lose on their money, lose out on the ability to buy more excessive necessities on, on, their, on, on our side of the house. So they lose all more, they can't buy as much stuff. They're incentivized because they now lose money, the money factor is now in place. We think these people care about money because it definitely betters the overall being of the, an individual's life and liberty. Secondly, it hurts others. We tell them that in this status quo, like family always wants to help out. So if you're addicted or you're constantly in the hospital, sometimes family members or some close friends might cover your bills. We tell you that these family members are more incentivized to help you say, please go, don't go in this dangerous lifestyle because more money is required, more resources are required. We think this is mutually exclusive to our side of the house because now we're increasing the amount of money that they have to pay. But thirdly, what we tell you is that as the healthcare system and as a government, we send a message, right? We think that when we add more money, we send a message that's so bad that we punish extra than the average individual. That these dangerous lifestyles are risking your life so bad and that you shouldn't do it, we add the money factor. We think this, we think this message is very powerful and we think this helps them realize that the impacts are really bad, prevents them from going to a dangerous lifestyle in the first place. We think that's what we want on our side of the house. Ladies and gentlemen, the comparative is that on their side of the house, people don't realize and actually accept the consequences for themselves and the people around them and will continue to live and hurt themselves and hurt the system. It's on that basis that we are very, very proud to propose this resolution. All right, I'd like to thank the speaker very much for that fine speech. And now I'd like to welcome the first opposition speaker to open the debate from their side of the house. Here, here.
Good morning, everyone. As your first opposition speaker, I'll be clarifying our stance and burdens in this debate. I'll be do going through a brief rebuttal of everything we've heard from side proposition so far. And then finally, I'll be getting into our first two contentions, one on the principle of health care and two on government control. My partner will be talking about our third point on ineffective deterrent later on. First, our stance and burdens. We do not need to support things like drugs or alcohol on our side of the house, but we believe that the healthcare system should um, essentially be blind. Our burdens for you is that first, we think this motion does not actually prevent dangerous lifestyles. Secondly, we think healthcare is an essential right that should be made easily accessible by every citizen. No, thank you. First, let's get into some of the bottom. So the first point they told you on side proposition was on justification. They told you how if they choose to harm themselves, if they choose to do this, they deserve to be punished. First off, we would tell you that most of, the, most of these people are, do not have a choice. We think most of these people are suffering from things like addictions. They're in a poor socioeconomic status. We don't think they have a choice in this. As well, if they're doing things that are illegal, they're already punished for drug abuse. We don't understand why we need to punish them more by removing their health care. They talked about how um, because they use more services, they should pay more. We think in most countries, these people already pay every time they go to the hospital for the treatment they receive. We don't understand why we should up that. We don't understand why we should make them pay more. Their second point was on deterrence. They tell you how um, these people will be less likely to do this if they have to pay more. We think that things like drugs already have jail time. We think that if this deterrent isn't even working, we don't understand why money will all of a sudden work. But then again, if this truly is their choice, and they conceded that it's really hard for them to change their lifestyle, if they have the ability to make this choice, we don't think money will be a factor in any way. As well, we, they admitted on their side of the house that anyone who takes <coughs> government resources should pay the same amount, Then we don't understand why if you have an addiction or you don't, you should be paying differently. Okay, so let's get into our first point today on the principle of health care. Three subpoints. First, the blind health care system. Ladies and gentlemen, in the status quo, healthcare is blind. We think healthcare is a system that, again, does not discriminate based on age, gender, sexuality, religion, or anything. We think lifestyle essentially falls under this. We think the system still helps people, no thank you, with addictions. And when we implement this, it creates a distinction between the two groups of people in the healthcare system. We think now the people in the healthcare system are no longer helping just people, but they're helping two divided groups. No thank you. We think this is inherently breaking the system and can create a slippery slope where now we can create more distinctions between all the different types of people in the healthcare system. We think the healthcare system needs to be blind, needs to help everyone equally, help everyone the same. This is the first harm we bring to you on our side of the house. Secondly, the discrimination of socioeconomic class. We think there are two actors we essentially need to analyze on our side of the house, the rich and the poor. First, let's look at the rich. We think people who are rich enough to do these um, dangerous lifestyles will have no impact on it. Will have no impact on them if they simply need to pay a bit more. We don't think this will stop them from doing things like drugs. We don't think this will stop them from doing things that are dangerous. But the more important actor we need to analyze is the poor. We think the poor are the people who need the most help. These are the people who are most often addicted to these substances, who are unable to stop themselves. We think we shouldn't separate them by saying that now the rich can do whatever they want, but now we have restrictions on the poor. The poor cannot do this. First show. The poor people are, are lacking money. Don't you think this resolution incentivizes them even more not to do this because now they'll be charged more money? No, we think if they lack money, they won't be, and if they, okay. Two scenarios. First, they won't even go to the hospitals in the first place because they don't have the money to pay for this. But even if they do go to the hospitals, we think now they won't have enough money to feed themselves afterwards. They won't have enough money to feed themselves to self-sustain. We don't think this benefits the poor in any way on their side of the house. Okay. Third subpoint: neglect of the poor. No, thank you. We think the poor again are the ones most affected by this resolution. In society, we are trying to help the poor people because they are the most vulnerable. <coughs> On side proposition, instead of helping them, now they can't be helped at all because now they don't have the money to even go to these places in the first place. We don't think they'll be going to hospitals if they know now they have to pay more, if they know that they can't even afford this. We think we are taking away the money they could be spending on things like food, like water. We don't understand why we have to force them to go into more debt, essentially, and if they are internally bleeding, if they have problems, no thank you. 
Again, we tell you that these poor people will only go to these hospitals either never or when they are in extremely dire situations, which will then be worse for them and worse for the hospital system when they have to pay for more treatment. And again, we think they now won't have enough money to pay for basic necessities. We think this is incredibly harmful. No, thank you. Our second point to you is on government control. Again, three sub points. First, the rights of citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone is treated equally in our status quo. They pay a fair amount of taxes. They abide by the same laws. We think they deserve the same treatment. They deserve to pay the same amount into these government systems, into these hospitals. We think it is completely unjust for the government to remove this equality, to remove um, these rights of the citizens. Secondly, the freedom of choice. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we have two actors. First, we're going to look at the general public. Secondly, again, at the people who have no choice. First, the general public. We think if these dangerous activities are legalized and condoned by the government, we don't understand why the government should now be punishing people for using them. We think even if it's drugs, even if it's things that are illegal, they are already punished through fines. They are already punished through jail time. We think they are still provided with health care in the status quo. We don't understand why this should change. For example, even with criminals who have harmed other people, we don't think we deny them health care in the status quo. Yes, they are punished, but we still allow them to live. This is a basic, fundamental thing that we stand for on our side of the house. No, thank you. We think that when we raise taxes, we are essentially denying people the right to live. We are denying these poor people the right to, um, to go to these hospitals and to help themselves. Now let's look at the people without a choice. This is where we focus most on the poor citizens. We think they grow up in areas where these activities are often normalized. They grow up in a society where they're either unaware that of these, all these government issues or they're too desperate to care. We think they often can't control their behavior. They often can't control drug abuses, alcohol um, abuses. We think they're exposed to this at an early age. We don't think they should be punished for things. Even if they're not, Oh, or furthermore, we think they often suffer from things like addictions or depressions. They can't control themselves in these kinds of cases. We only make it worse. We only increase the burden on them when we force them to now pay more money. Third sub point, the nature of the injury. Ladies and gentlemen, we think the injury and the choice often don't have any correlation. For example, we think in society it's very dangerous when you just go outside to be hit by a car to be mugged. We think often there are cases where their actions have no correlation with whatever dangerous activity they're doing. Two scenarios. First, as my partner brought up, it can often be hereditary. For example, if lung cancer runs in my family and I smoke once a week, I could get lung cancer not because of smoking, but because of the fact that it's hereditary. We don't understand why these people should be punished more. But secondly, if they get into an accident, say I'm an alcoholic and I break an arm on a fluke, we don't understand why there's a correlation between these two. We don't think it is caused by the addiction. We don't understand why this person should pay more. It's for all these reasons we're so proud to oppose. All right. Thank you very much for that speech. And now I'd like to welcome the second proposition speaker to continue their case. Here, here. Mr. Speaker, it is on the basis that they haven't actually proved to you how it's going to benefit the poor on their side of the house. They haven't proved to us, if we don't increase health care, how they're actually going to stop drug abuse that we are so proud to propose today's resolution. Let's get into some rebuttal of everything they've heard so far heard so far on their side of the house. So basically their first point was that hospitals should be blind, we shouldn't discriminate against the poor, healthcare needs to be equal. Mr. Speaker, the fact of the matter is, these people who lead dangerous lifestyles use the healthcare system more, they use hospitals more, they use the resources more. It is already not on the same equal playing field, we are already having it on balance. What we're doing on our side of the house is actually balancing it out. We're actually giving the people who use the system more a fair, like a fair um, income, a fair price for healthcare because they use the resources more. We think that they have completely lost the impact in that first point, and also it is not an equal system in the first place. But secondly, they said that they're going to discriminate against the rich. They said that there's no impact to this. They haven't actually shown us how they're going to impact on their side of the house, 
how like the rich are going to change on their side of the house. So we think this is a wash. We think this is not mutually exclusive. But secondly, they talked about the, how they can't feed themselves. They're so desperate. Okay, if they're so desperate, they have a drug addiction. If they don't, if they go to go to the hospital, come back out, get the health care, they haven't told us how they're going to stop drug abuse. On our side of the house, we actually think they're going to use these drugs even more because now they have no incentive to actually stop using these drugs. They said that they can't feed themselves anymore. Well, even if they don't pay the health care, they're going to use the, food, the, the money that they need for food to actually buy drugs because they're so addicted, because they're so desperate, like the world that side opposition has painted for you. But then they said, oh, they won't go to the hospital anymore. Okay, we think that just harms the poor people on both sides of the house. We think that they haven't showed us at any impact on how their side of the house is actually better. But secondly, they talked about this idea about government control. They talked about this idea about the rights for the citizens and everyone should get fair and same treatment. Okay, if everyone gets the same treatment, then we can pay equal health care. The fact of the matter is, not everyone is getting the same treatment, Mr. Speaker. They're getting equal amount of, of treatment. We have basic analysis that it, they haven't even contradicted on our side of the house. If you use something more, you pay more for it. If you use something less, you pay less for it. We think that this is a principal argument that they haven't even contradicted on our side of the house. Okay, next they talked about this idea about the general public, how the government, you already punched them through jail time. Okay, if these people still use drugs after jail time, we think that this is giving them even more of a deterrence, even more of an incentive to actually stop using drugs. That's what we're trying to do in the house. It's not working in the current status quo if they are continuously using drugs. If they still have gone to jail, they still have drugs. We think that we're putting upon them. We're giving them turns to actually stop using drugs. We think that's what we're on their side of the house. Secondly, they talked about this, this idea about denying the poor people like the right to live. They're so desperate. We already had clashed on this point in their first principle point. But lastly, they talked about this idea about the nature of injuries. How their like, injuries aren't necessarily co correlated with their actions. Okay, if someone has a hereditary lung disease, if they choose to smoke, that's their fault for actually choosing to harm themselves. If they chose to do this in the first place, then it's their fault for using more resources. It's their fault for actually choosing to actively harm themselves in the first place. We think that's a fundamental dis... Like, they never really touched on this point. They said, oh, if someone has a lung uh, hereditary lung disease, they're going to choose to smoke. They still choose to smoke. They still actively harm themselves. We still think if they're using more resources, they should pay for more. This is why we're so proud to propose. Sure, I'll take this now. Okay, Bianca, in places such as the United States, where I pay for services each time I go in, why should I have to pay more when I'm already paying for the services already? I'm not draining excess amounts. Okay, amount. this actually is getting right into my constructive case. Because of the fact is, when you go to a hospital, you only pay for the same amount of resources that you do like other people. We think that you're actually taking away the resources from other people who are terminally ill. We think this is the prioritization of patients. We think that when people who actively try to harm themselves, they should be punished for doing something that actively harms themselves. If they someone who can't choose if they're ill or not, if they have cancer or something like that, they didn't choose to get cancer, we don't think that we should be taking resources away from them. We think it's actually going to harm the hospital, which actually gets into my, my constructive material with the benefits to the hospital. Let's quickly get into some reconstruction. So really, they didn't really touch on the heart of our case. They didn't really touch on anything that we said. They said that, oh, you don't have a, you do not have a choice, like poor people do not have a choice. Okay, we already touched on that in rebuttal. We think that they still do have a choice. They still actively try to harm themselves. And even if they go to the hospital and have jail time, we still think that they're going to use the money to buy drugs if they have a drug addiction. Then we said that um, uh, if you use it more, you should have more money. If you use it less, you have less money. They said that we already pay people so much. They only brought up the example of the US. We're talking about Western liberal democracies. We think that they should expand their um, scope. And at, lastly, we talked about a, a deterrence how we're actually going to have people that are less likely to commit crime. They never really clashed directly with our points, Mr. Speaker. All they said was that, oh, we already have jail time. I already refuted this in my free construction. How jail time is not working in the status quo. We need to add another piece of deterrence. Let's get into my constructive material about the benefits to the actual hospitals. So we think that in the status quo, people who fundamentally actively harm themselves choose to actively take drugs. They have the choice to actively harm themselves. 
home. If they don't want to pay more income, if they don't want to pay more health care, they can say, no, I won't smoke anymore. I won't take drugs anymore. I won't do all alcohol anymore. I'm actually guessing their POI right now. They are going to probably say that the poor have no choice. We see that they still do have a choice. And even if they have a drug addiction, we think that when we actually take their money, that money can actually go into rehabilitation. Because we said that the money we're actually taking is going to benefit directly the hospital. The hospital, rehabilitation programs, resources. We actually think that when we're taking the poor's money to actually benefit the healthcare system, we can actually benefit them as well. We can actually help them get rid of them. They're so desperate, like the world that they painted in on their side of the house. But on, in this point, I would like to make something very, very clear. What is the difference between someone who chooses to actively harm themselves and someone who has an illness that they don't choose to have? We think that someone who actively chooses to harm themselves should be punished on the basis that they choose to, uh, uh, to harm themselves. Someone who doesn't choose to harm themselves actually doesn't choose to harm themselves, so they shouldn't get punished for this. We think that when people go in who actively choose to harm themselves, take away the resources from these people who have a terminal illness, who have cancer, we think that that's fundamentally harming them as well as harming the other person. We think that this is extremely harmful on their side of the house. What is the comparative on our side of the house? We actually think we benefit the hospitals because now this healthcare money, this increased amount of healthcare money, is going directly to that hospital to actually benefit them. But secondly, we think we have the prioritization of patients. We actually think we help people who don't choose to harm themselves. It is on this basis that we are so proud to propose today's resolution. All right, thank you very much for that speech. Now I'd like to welcome the second opposition speaker to continue the case on their side of the house. Here, here. I'm going to stop and 
injecting heroin. We don't think this happens. We think that there is a problem, there is an addiction, and this is why they continue to do so, right? Thirdly, we think they won't actually get this rehabilitation because they cannot afford to do so, right? If I am poor and I cannot provide to provide for myself, I cannot go to the hospital to get these now very, very expensive services that they're offering to you on their side of the house, right? Their second point was about deterrence, how they told you that they want to help people with a lung disease. Again, so do we. That's exactly what we're fighting for. But on their side of the house, they make this healthcare way less accessible. They make it so that people cannot actually get the help we think that they need, right? Secondly, we think they increase the amount of, they decrease the amount of people we're actually helping within a country because it's only the rich people who are able to pay for their expensive lifestyles. We think that it's not the poor who are able to help themselves, able to help themselves get out of this situation, right? And thirdly, we think it's not actually a deterrence, right? Because they don't smoke because it's cheap. And now because it's more expensive, they're just going to stop smoking. I don't jump off a cliff, cliff because it's cheap, right? I do not go skydiving because it's cheap, right? The reason why I do it is to get that temporary feeling, which is what I'm going to be talking about in my third and constructive point, right? They gave you this point about the benefit to the hospital, where they basically said the hospital, hospital is going to be benefited, but what they forget is that the hospital is benefited at the extent, expense of the poor people within society, of the middle class people within society, the people who actually need these resources are being harmed by this resolution, right? They never brought us an exact way in which they're going to help these people who now cannot afford the services, we're not going to be going to this now suddenly good hospital in the first place, right? They think, we, they perfectly interpreted our rebuttal to this when they told you that like, these people have a choice, they have the choice, they can, can, they've completely mischaracterized the nature of an addiction, the reason why people smoke is not clear on their side of the house. Go ahead. How are you going to stop poor people from taking drugs? Okay, we don't need to prove on our side of the house at all that we're going to stop this. That's not at all our burden to take. What we do need to prove, however, is that the mechanism that you are proposing on side proposition is really harmful and in fact going to increase the problem, create more of an issue within society, and it's going to be worse for the people who have these addictions, right? We never need to prove to you that we're abolishing it. That's not at all our stance, not at all our burden. They can't bring that to you on their side of the house. Okay, so reconstruction, right? Um, in response to our first, in, first point about the principle of healthcare, they told you that like we're giving them a fair price on healthcare, right? We think a fair price is a price that everyone pays regardless of the way that they got that disease, right? We think that in a fair, truly fair system, you have a blind system that does not discriminate based on the method of which you got the disease, but will charge you based on the disease that you actually have, right? We think that they, in most countries, right, and my partner brought this up in a POI, you pay for the number of times that you attend the hospital, right? So if I go to the hospital multiple times, it's still too, like, it still impacts me. We think that by charging them more, they are not going to be able to go to the hospital as much as they need. We think this is really, really harmful. In response to our second point, they basically just gave this, again, this line analysis they're going on, which is that we should prioritize patients. Again, in a fair, in a blind system, we do not prioritize people, right? If people have the same disease, we treat them equally. We do not say you are more important than you, right? That is the way the system works. We think this is a fair method of the system, and that is why we continue to oppose this motion. Okay, now some constructive. Our third point today is about the ineffective deterrent two sub points. Number one, about dangerous lifestyles. We want to analyze why people indulge. And secondly, the risk assertion that already occurs. Okay, let's take a look at dangerous lifestyles. We think that the people who indulge in life, dangerous lifestyles do, through, do so through desperation to escape reality, right? We think that like riding a motorcycle, cliff diving, smoking, we think that this gives you a temporary feeling, which is what people crave. We think that people become addicted, at which point they do this not because they want to, but more because they have to, right? People with addictions are usually of so lower socioeconomic class, right? We think they do this through desperation. People know what they're doing is expensive, and they know what they're doing is, is dangerous, right? There's an assertion of risk, people know what they're buying is expensive, but they continue to do it, okay? How is this impact going to be harmful? Two reasons. Number one, we think people are likely to use unconventional methods of health care, which is ultimately harmful, right? I'm more likely to like go to the black market 
or use methods that are not the actual hospital system in order to get the care that I need because I cannot afford it, right? Secondly, we think people are less likely to actually go to the hospital and seek help for their addiction because they cannot afford it, creating a larger class of people in poverty with problems to do with like addiction, with these kind of issues. We think this is harmful for society as a whole. Now, some risk assertion, right? We think that we need to compare our world to theirs. We think that riding motorcycles, smoking, all that kind of thing comes with terms and conditions. People know what they're going getting into, but they do not decide not to do it because we think they have this need they want to. On their side of the house, they have dangerous activities occurring. On our side of the house, we have dangerous activities occurring. But at least for us, we can allow these people to treat themselves. We give them the health care we need. We do not discriminate against them. We maintain a fair society. We maintain a fair system of prioritizing people. We think this is good. We think we win on this. And that is why we're on side opposition. All right, thank you very much for that fine speech. And now I'd like to welcome the third proposition speaker to close the constructive part of their case. Here, here. Some people who are going to get, get more healthy and stop abusing the system, we think that will help more people on our side of the house. That's why we're so proud to propose a resolution at hand. And in this clear speech, I'm going to do two things. Number one, this is principally justified. Number two, will this be effective? With that in mind, I'm going to jump into my first question right away. The first idea we get out of sight, opposition to this idea about a per, the principal healthcare system. The first idea they bring out is about how the, how the, just, how the healthcare system should be blind. Firstly, I don't think that we don't never get any analysis on why exactly it's so bad to have a blind system. We don't. What is the impact here? We think we need to hear a response from their side of health. We think that it's completely okay to distinguish people who are healthy and unhealthy, right? But we think that like we, we think we're, if we if we think we're, it is justified for us to like, discriminate against people who keep on abusing the system because they're wasting our resources. They keep using our health and not getting better and better because we're trying to help them by giving them medicine, right? We want them to rehabilitate and go back to society and live their lives. If you're not doing that because they can actively choose to harm their own body, we think we're completely justified to make them pay more. But lastly, if, we, if, if on our side of the house, it means that more people can be healthy, more people can be off drugs, we think that it's okay if the system is not blind. And if it's okay, we distinguish different, between different people. The next idea they bring out is about a distinguish, the dis discrimination of class. They talk about the rich, they talk about the poor. Firstly, we think that the rich is a complete wash on, in this debate. In both sides of the house, the rich will continue to do drugs because they, they will be they continue to pay. We think that when, when we talk about when they, we think that the poor is the majority of the case, we're going to show you why on our, on our side of the house, the poor will be better off. First, we think that many poor, poor people are trapped in poverty because of their substance abuse, right? They spend all their money buying drugs, buying alcohol. They don't have any like, cap capacity to use money, their money in or anything else, or like, they, <coughs> don't, they don't have any capacity to do anything else. We think that we, we think that this is act as the current for them to you to like stop doing drugs using a science analysis about how individually they're like this likely going to use use money to buy drugs. How if they if they have family members or other people who cover for their system, these people are likely going to try to help them try to stop uh, try to stop like um doing on drugs. And lastly, about how we send a message, right? How people realize the fact that the impact of doing drugs is really really great, not just on an economic level, but also on a health level. We think that overall we create more current on our last on our side of the house. But I'm gonna add one last thing. We think that if people buy less drugs, we think the drug industry, drug dealers will send will we will go down because they have less business, right? We think that overall the drug industry will be less on our side of the house. And we can we can help the poor because if the poor are not if the poor is not can we can use use money on other things such as food, such as like clothing and things like that. We think that this helps them more in terms of in, in terms of getting out of the poverty cycle and helping them like live better lives. The last thing we get out of side no thank you, side opposition, is that they will certainly not go to a hospital. 
Firstly, within that, like many people, many times, it's very like on drugs, right? If they OD or if they like pass out, they, it's oftentimes they have to go to a hospital without a choice. But secondly, within the oftentimes they don't want to go to Black Mirror because it's really, really sketchy. It is like, it is, they, they realize the fact that in the Black Mirror hospital, it can be, it can actually harm their health because they don't have the proper equipment. They're not registered by the government. But thirdly, within the on our side of the hospital, we can also fight black market, black market like clinics and doctors and hospitals and make sure that people are getting adequate health care, but also making sure that people are not just wasting their resources we give them, we give them trying to help them. The next thing they talk about is government responsibility. They firstly say that if it's if we legalize drugs, if we sorry, if we legalize alcohol and all these things, then we shouldn't punish them for it. This is not about the legality of like alcohol. We think this is about that them abusing the system more and more, about abusing the system more and more. In, after if, even if like, we're trying to help them, trying to get them healthy, but they're still doing these things that actively harm their physical health, even if it's legal, we think it's on that basis that we can punish them more, not on the legality of these substances. The next thing they say is that we're denying them the right to live. We think that these people, if within an on our cycle house, if we just keep conceding to them, keep giving them better medical resources, they themselves who will go back to these dangerous lifestyles are denying themselves the right to live. We think that we think that we have to have an extra deterrent against these people to make sure they do not go back on drugs. The last thing they say is that what about, what about injuries that have no correlation to their addiction? We think our hospitals can distinguish it, distinguish that, right? If a person was like a lung disease because they were born it, born with it, that person will not be now person will not be punished because the fact that he had, she, that person has a lung disease is not because of the fact that he has a his, he lives a dangerous lifestyle. But compared to another person who has a lung disease because he actively smokes, we think that person can, will be paid will be charged more because he lives a dangerous lifestyle. What do we talk about? We firstly talk about on a basis they waste more resources, therefore they deserve the pain more. The first response we get is that these people don't have a choice because they, they are addicted to drugs. It's not enough for slight opposition to come up and say because they're completely because they're addicted to drugs, they're completely irrational. I'm going to give you analysis on why, a more specific analysis because people who are addicted to drugs, they've got urge to do act to drugs, right? There's an act, act, active incentive for them to keep on doing drugs. We think it's not just that they're completely irrational, they cannot think at all. It's just there's an urge for them to do to do, to do drugs. On our side of the house, we add an extra, extra incentive for them to not do drugs. We fight back the urge for them to do drugs, with that ultimately it's better on our side of the house. But secondly, the response is that they already pay for the healthcare system. Why can we charge them more? Firstly, they're using much more than they're paying, right? Even within that, again, on our side of the house, we outline that they use the healthcare system much more, much more disproportionately compared to other people because they actively harm themselves with their unhealthy lifestyle. We think this is completely justified. Even if, but even if, even if on our side of the house, we are not paying, even if they're, they're paying disproportionately and we think that we're charging them unfairly, and all this money is going back to the healthcare system to help these people. We think that's a completely justified course of action. The next thing we say, the next thing, the weird thing we get out of Maggie is that well, like, we shouldn't punish drug users. Then why don't we send them to jail in the first place? Why don't we punish them in the first place? Why? We, think we need to hear a response from their side of the house. We think that even if we lose our own principle, I'm going to show you why in, in, pragmatically we also win. So I'm going to go to my next thing about whether or not this is effective. Sure. Alan, if you punish them already by making them pay every single time that they go to the hospital, right? Don't you think it's less justified to make them pay even more because this addiction is not by their fault? Okay, in the status quo, they're just paying equally as everybody else. We think the fact that is the fact that they're completely they're using the system over and over again without showing signs that they want to. When they want to be more healthy, they want to help themselves, that's why we think it's justified to punish them more. And the point we get out of side opposition is that this is ineffective. They say that they're using drugs to escape reality. Yes, that's true. People sometimes do drugs to, like, to get a good feeling. But also people care about money, right? People care about the fact that they, have, they want to have money to buy things. We think that, like, people, we think that people, this is actually, again, this still acts as a deterrent for them to, like, to, to, um, to, to, to not do drugs because people need this money to like buy things they want. Okay, what do we talk about? We talk about how like there's deterrence, right? The first the, the first response is they say that, is that we already punish drugs, we already punish drugs like using drugs by law. We think that again on our side of the house, it's just still much better in the status quo. That response is medicatory at best. The second response is that these people are already choosing to buy drugs. We don't think that we don't think at this point has no, any impact. We think that this absolutely matters because again we're charging them more money. We think these people actively care about money because they need money to buy different things they need. And left. That's why we think that the, we think that this will be an effective deterrent, even if we're like, we don't help, we don't even if, even if it, even if every single drug user and like, we don't help every single one of them, we think that there will be at least some people who will we can help on our side of the house. We think on a comparative level, it's still much better on our side of the house because we help certain people get out of drugs and like create an actual deterrent for them. But the last thing they say is that we, create, we make it harder for them to access drug to access these house, hospitals and help them. We think that in the status quo, they can access these. 
Uh, access to these health care systems all they want, but it's the fact that they go back to drugs over and over again that makes it inefficient. We think that we have to do something to stop that, to make sure that we're actually helping them. The last thing we get is that we're benefiting, we talked about how we benefit the system. There is problems that we harm the poor, but we think that the money in the poor's hand usually just goes to drugs. We think the money in our hand goes to the healthcare system, that's why we're so proud of it. All right, thank you very much for that speech. Now I'd like to welcome the third opposition speaker. Here, here. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we think we've seen a side of opposition that has ultimately hung their case on the fact that people are now going to stop doing drugs and how people currently abuse the system and why that's so harmful. We think on their side of the house, they have to actually prove to us why when you change the system, you are actually going to get more benefits than the harms that we bring to you. We don't think they've adequately proven this to us on our side of the house, which is why we think we've taken this debate. Okay, what will I be doing as your third speaker on side opposition? Two things. First, I'm going to be clearing a couple mischaracterizations that side proposition put on us, and then I'm going to be going into the three main themes that I've divided this debate up into. First, is this justified? And second, how is this going to affect the poor? Third, the rich. So, let's go into first, things I have to clear up. I have five different things. So first of all, we think we don't need to prove on our side of the house a mechanism that is going to improve the system as a whole, right? Our job on opposition is to question their mechanism and to prove why that's actually more harmful than the current status quo. We think that's our job and not to bring to you any other mechanism. Second of all, they tell us that we have to broaden our scope, that we're only talk about the, talking about the United States. Well then, where are their examples? We don't think that they brought to you any. Third of all, they never deal with the people and how we're going to help the people in the status quo who are currently addicted. They're not going to be able to go to hospitals. We don't think they've addressed this at all. Fourth, we think that we still do support rehabilitation centers. We have never said that we're not going to support them at all, but we don't think that we can do that at the, at the expense of the people who are struggling, right? We don't think that's a very reasonable and justifiable way to actually put more money into rehabilitation centers. Finally, Alan actually came up here and told you that it's easy for people to stop doing drugs because they can think about what they're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's something called an addiction. They can't stop doing drugs. They don't have the mind or the mental capacity to think about it. All they can think about is the craving of doing that one line of cocaine. We don't think they can actually like co co coherently stop doing this kind of action. But sure, okay, if they don't have any money for food, how are they gonna buy more drugs? Okay, well that's the thing. On your side of the house, you're making, you're giving them less amount of money to go and get food. On your side of the house, you're actually leaving them out on the streets to die, or like letting them have less health care, because if you increase the amount for them, then they have less of a chance to be admitted into a hospital, less of a chance to be helped. On our side of the house, we stand for helping everyone equally, because we understand as the government, we care for each of our citizens as a whole and fairly. So, let's get on to the first theme about how is this actually justified. Under this, I have six main points of contention that were actually discussed. First of all, do these people actually deserve an extra punishment? Until our, until their second speaker, they never truly address that we do have punishment in the status quo, right? We think we have jail time, we think we have warnings, we think they've even upped the prices on cigarettes. On their side of the house, they have never proven to you why a monetary incentive is going to be so much better, let alone they never prove to you how much this monetary incentive is actually going to be, right? On our side of the house, we tell you that we'd rather take care of people's lives than try and punish them in an extra way. We think that the life of the person is better than having them die. Second of all, the blind system, right? We think that Bianca gets up here and tell you prioritization is necessary. We need prioritization. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're truly talking about Western liberal democracies, which is again what Bianca told us, then why are we not standing for a blind system which almost every single Western liberal democracy upholds? We all realize that every single citizen is equal in our own eyes. That is why we have the purpose of a blind system. We, the reason why we don't prioritize people in the status quo is because we realize that every single citizen is equal and needs help. Third of all, let's actually talk about the two different systems that happen in Western liberal democracies. We think on their side of the house, they address only the free healthcare system. We think that even in the free healthcare system, we think that the government, when they implemented this kind of government system, they were actually willing to take on this kind of stuff, right? We don't think that the government completely forgot about these kinds of things. We think the government was prepared for these kinds of 
prepared for um, like what these actions were going to be. But second of all, let's talk about like a privatized healthcare system, which actually happens in places like the United States and Japan, right? We think every single time a person goes to the hospital, they pay to use those services. On their side of the house, they generalize everyone and say, no, but they're using more services, they're draining more money. That is not true at all, because they're paying the amount that the same citizen has to pay for. The only difference is now their side, the poor people can't go to hospitals because they increased the amount of um, the increased amount. Fourthly, they basically did address this all, but like what happens if a person is alcoholic and breaks their arm, right? We think that the hospital can now chalk it up to being they were drunk and fell and that's why they broke an arm, that's why they deserve to pay more for this broken arm. We never think they addressed this. Angelina already brought this up in the first speech. We think this still stands. Fifth and finally, if the government condones these kinds of action, then why do we pun do not punish them, punish them for doing these actions in the status quo, right? We think that when you have things like no, having motorcycles available, having cigarettes available, why not just like take away these things if they think they're so bad? Why do you need to punish the people? We don't think you're handling the core of the problem. But second of all, let's actually talk about like illegal substances, right? We think that's already punished, that's already dealt with in the government system. You don't need an extra punishment that is going to like directly harm people who truly need the help. We think they only talk long term, not short term, which is actually going to be my next thing on how, which is going to help the poor. It, okay, under this, I've divided it into two main sub -points. First, which is actually going to help the poor in the short term, and which is going to help the poor in the long term. In the short term, we don't think they actually tell us how the poor are struggling right now, other than the fact that we provide an incentive. But that doesn't apply in the short term, right? Because we don't think people who are already addicted to drugs can help. On our side of the house, we bring to you the analysis that people who are currently already addicted aren't going to be helped at all, instead of left off into the streets. On their side of the house, they think rehab is so much better, they should spend this money on food. How do you do that when you have no money at all because all you were doing was trying to get over your when you have an addiction and you can't go to hospitals? We don't think they help short term these people. So, long term, they actually talk about this point of deterrent. We're going to prevent future drug users into going into the system. First of all, we already think Maggie and Angelina both proved to you why this is ineffective. Let's go through it again. We think that, first of all, deterrent doesn't actually exist, right? Because when people live in ghetto areas of America, in ghetto areas of certain countries, they're raised from a very young age that this is something that's normalized, right? We don't think you tackle that kind of problem of drug abuse at a young age with this kind of system. All you do is you punish the people who have no right, to, they don't have any right, because they are people who are vulnerable in this situation, right? We think when you have a system that neglects them, when you have a system that targets even like children who don't understand what the legal system truly is, that's the side that harms everyone else, right? But let's go into the final act about the rich. Basically, on both sides of the house, we think this was absolutely dropped, right? We think on their side of the house, they said, oh yeah, okay, we can take it that the rich isn't going to be affected at all. But ladies and gentlemen, we have to, they have to prove to you on their side of the house how it's going to help the majority of the citizens. If the poor and the rich come together, that's like a majority of the citizens. We don't think they've proved to you how it's going to help the poor. And furthermore, how it's going to improve the lives of the rich, right? On our side of the house, we tell you the rich aren't going to care at all. But furthermore, it increases the gap between the two because now the poor can't pay for it, but the rich can. The poor are denied basic services that the rich can afford. That's the harm we bring to you on our side of the house. We now think that the rich are going to think they're so much better than everyone else because they can afford these kinds of things. On their side of the house, they never contested this and only told you, okay, the rich isn't an actor that actually has to be debated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is because we stand for people, for like what we have in the status quo. We stand for everyone having the current access that they have to the current healthcare system. And it is because we stand to help the poor and to eat, like not, not, like not make the gap between the rich and the poor so as big as it is in the status quo. We think we proud to, we are, we think that we are proud to oppose. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much for that speech. And now I'd like to welcome the opposition reply to end the debate from their side of the house. Hear, hear.
Ladies and gentlemen, today we have seen two distinct worlds in this debate. In the world of sad proposition, they are okay with continuing to take money from the poor. They are okay with the government infringing on the rights of people. They are okay with prioritizing one life over another. On our side of the house, we stand for the status quo. We do still support rehab centers. We are not going to leave these people without help, but we don't think this is the right mechanism to do so when we so severely harm one group of people. It's because we recognize the nature of these people. We recognize that they have no choice. They often suffer from depression. They suffer from addictions, and it's only going to get worse when they are more desperate that they can't even sustain themselves anymore. So for all these reasons, we're still so proud to oppose the motion today. Now, as your final speaker on side opposition, I will be crystallizing this debate under two key themes. First off, is this justified? Second, is this an effective deterrent? First, is this justified? Now, on our side of the house, we brought to the point on the principle of the healthcare system. We told you that the healthcare system is essentially blind, and it's not up to the government to decide which life values is valued more than another. Now, we told you that the poor are the ones who are going to be harmed, the poor are the ones who are most vulnerable. We told you how they are now no longer going to go to hospitals because of the fact that they have to pay more, or even if they do go, they are now more desperate because they no longer have the money to sustain themselves. On their side of the house, they told you that this is a choice. They told you that everyone makes a choice, and if they choose to harm themselves, they deserve to be punished. Ladies and gentlemen, we tell you then, why shouldn't it be dependent on how many times they go to the hospital, but why should it be dependent on the lifestyles they face? They told you how now the government is going to be paying more for resources. We think it's the, it doesn't matter why you got this injury. It matters why it matters about the injury you have. We told you that addictions, are pe when people are addicted, they have no ability to stop. On their side of the house, they told you at least they provide an incentive. We think they are going to be more desperate, less willing to help themselves, less willing to get out of these addictions when they can't sustain their lives anymore. Our second point we brought to you was on government control. We told you how the government cannot stop people from doing things they've legalized. And even if it is illegal, even if it is things like drugs, they're already being punished through things like jail time. They're already being punished through things like fines. We don't understand why we need to take away their right to life. We tell you that these people often grow up being addicted, or they are born being addicted, and they are more susceptible to diseases, they are more susceptible to lung cancer. We don't think it's their fault if they get something like this. They told you even if they smoke once a week, it's their fault. They are still making this choice. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, this is something the government has legalized. We don't think smoking or drinking once in a while is a bad thing. We don't think they can simply say this on their side of the house. Finally, we prove to you that if you're an alcoholic and you break your arm, why can't the, um, the government can just simply say this is because of alcohol? We don't think they can prove a direct correlation between any of these instances. We still think this point stands. Our second theme to you is, is this an effective deterrent? Ladies and gentlemen, we told you how these people are not going to stop on our side of the house. If it is illegal, if they know the risk and they're still doing this, we don't think money is going to stop them. We told you that, in fact, they're going to resort to going th to things like the black market. We think this is even harder to regulate, and this is even harder to help them. They told you, at least, again, they're helping some people. We think we have to weigh the harms here. When we harm the poor, when we take away their right to life, we think that this is worse on their side of the house, even if a few people get helped, we still think this is worse. Finally, again, we told you how if they already are given these incentives, if they are already going to suffer from jail time, if they are already going to be harmed in these ways, we don't understand why they should be harmed more. And finally, again, we never stated that we don't support rehab centers. We never stated we don't support helping these people. We still want to help these people, but we don't believe taking money from the poor, taking away people's rights, is the right method to do this. For all these reasons, we're so proud of you. Thank you very much for that fine speech. And now I'd like to welcome the proposition replies to close the debate off on their side and indeed the debate as a whole. Here, here. Mr. Speaker, there has been a misconception in their third speaker. They have said that if we can't help the majority of people, then we can't win today's debate. Mr. Speaker, the majority of people are not on drugs. The majority of people are not on drugs. If the minority of people on drugs actually get harmed, they pay more to the system, we can actually benefit the majority of the people because we're benefiting the healthcare system as a whole. We're benefiting the majority of the people. That is why we're so proud to propose. Let's get right into my, first, uh, my three questions to crystallize today's debate. 
Firstly, is it justified on a principal level? Secondly, which side benefits the poor and the rich? Thirdly, is it really a deterrence to increase health care? Let's get right to my first, first point. So basically, Jacqueline came up here and brought up this entire case about how we want equality, that they they want to take care of people's lives. We think that they're not doing that on their, their side of the on our side of the house. We think that on our side of the house, they have never actually attacked the fact that these people are actively choosing to harm themselves. They're actively committing a crime against themselves. That's why, on a principal level, they should pay more because they should be punished. They said that they already have jail time, they already have minimum sentences, they already have, like, already a punishment. Well, it's not working in the status quo because we still have drug abuses. We think we're providing an alternate method to actually stop drug abuse, to actually give them a deterrent. We think on our side of the house, even if we can't prove that we're benefiting like this small minority of people, we are still benefiting the healthcare system as a whole. We are still benefiting the majority of people. But then they said that if they use it once or twice, if they use drugs once or twice, then we shouldn't actually harm them. We shouldn't actually uh, give them an increased amount of uh, uh, healthcare. We think that on our side of the house, we already clearly stated to you in the model, it's if they abuse the system. It's if they repeat this offense. If they use drugs constantly, they go out of the hospital, they come back in, they have drugs again. They go out of the hospital, they come back in, it's because of drugs again. We think that's the reason, that's what we're trying to focus on. These people are not going to change in the status quo, they're actually going to use drugs more. If we give them an incentive to actually stop using drugs, that's when we actually benefit them. That's when we actually create a deterrence. On their side of the house, they never told you how that on their side of the house they're going to benefit these people. They never told you how these rich people or poor people are actually going to stop drug abuse. We think that that's fundamentally flawed on their side of the house. But let's get to my second uh, question about is it really a deterrence? So basically, what did they say? They said that why punish someone on drugs? We think that we actually do have to punish someone on drugs because it's illegal. If the current system is not working, then we actually have to create another incentive. We think that this monetary incentive is actually going to, even if it's just a small minority of drug users, at least we're benefiting the majority. Secondly, we talked about they talked about why, uh, why money? Why, should, why is it actually going to be a monetary incentive? Okay. Even if we can't prove to you why it's a monetary incentive, at least we're proposing to you another incentive to why maybe the minority of people will actually fall for it. If the minority of people think it's a deterrence to actually use drugs, we think that on our side of the house, we're still benefiting them. On their side of the house, all they have proved to you is the harms. All they have proved to you is a mitigatory case that they haven't proven to you any benefits. The rich won't be affected, the poor won't actually benefit. But let's actually get to this last contention about which side actually benefits the poor and the rich. So they said that the rich will now think that they can do anything they want. We actually, they don't think this will happen. Because when the rich actually go into the system, they actually get rehabilitated more. They are, uh, they're using their money to actually benefit the system. We think they will get a better rehabilitation and at least the minority of that, um, of that group is actually helped. It is because on our side of the house, we think that we can still benefit the majority because we're benefiting the healthcare system as a whole. We can still benefit the minority of those who use drugs. We're so proud to propose today's resolution. Thank you.